So good morning. In today's video, it is all about shooting with a clear sky above me. I've been up since 15 minutes past five because we are reaching that point of the year where you have to get up really, really early to catch sunrise, especially if you have a 45 minutes drive in front of you. So when you're photographing with a clear sky, what you always want first and foremost is a subject as in all other kind of photography. Right now I have come out here to photograph the Øresunds bridge, which is the bridge that connects Denmark and Sweden. So that's my subject. The next thing you can do, as I mentioned, I've been up early. When you're photographing on a clear sky, golden hour, blue hour is obviously really good to aim for. The problem with photographing with a clear sky is that there's not super much interest in the sky. So the photos can have a tendency to become a little bit boring. We want to counter that boring and bring a little bit more intention and interest into the photo. And we can do that during the golden hour and blue hour due to the more interesting light and color. So that is why I'm photographing here at sunrise. Now, what I didn't plan for this shot was that just behind the bridge, we have a building. And uh, I can see the sun is coming up now, so I just want to focus a little bit on actually getting the shot. So what I planned out is that the sun is rising just between the pillars of the bridge. At least from the viewpoint where I am right now. Like I can obviously walk a little bit back and forward if that's what I want. But it looks really, really nice. As I said, what I didn't plan for was that there is a big building just between the pillars from this angle. God damn it, Sweden! <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's still a, a pretty decent shot. I actually do have a cloud just above the bridge, which in this particular case, I'm actually not even sure that it brings that much interest, good interest in the photo. So um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I would actually have preferred that the cloud wasn't there to get a completely clean scene and then only with the sunrise, which looks gorgeous right here. Sunrise between the pillars. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then that day building. Should I clone it out? <laughs> Probably not, no. This looks nice. You can actually see through the building, through the windows. In regard to my settings, I put on the long lens, almost out at 400 millimeter. F11, ISO 100 gives me a shutter speed of 250th of a second. And I am just working a little bit with different focal lengths and I'm also going to make a vertical shot. Despite the immediate disappointment with the background building, I actually think these photos turned out great. I really like how you can see the sun through the windows of the building, which I think adds a rather interesting detail. I also like this slightly wider focal range version of the scene as it gives a bit more breathing room to all the elements. But as I had to walk a bit to the left, the building is now in a less than optimal position, which messes up the photo a bit. I also like the vertical version here, 
And I also got one with less water and more sky. I have however not entirely decided which version I like the best. The one with more sky does come off as more minimalist, while the one with the water fills the frame with interest. Let me know which one you like the best, or if you prefer one of the horizontal versions. <laughs> so that just happened so, so fast. Uh, the sun just came out and I just like, ah, oh, had to run all the way along this little pier here, all the way over there. Uh, and it was as if the sun was actually coming up faster than I managed to run that way. But I, I, I did get a few photos and I think it actually turned out really, really nice here. So the sun is way past the bridge right now. But <laughs> the, back to the point of the video, the theme of the video is that even though I have clouds this morning, which I actually think adds to the photo, at least with the composition I have found right now, you can see so you can see right here, I have the sun right here, I have the clouds up here, and the bridge is balancing out the elements here. So obviously, compositionally, you also want to have balance. You always want to have balance in your photo, subject balance. It is just so, so important. Um, so if you want to learn more about composition in landscape photography, be sure to get my two eBooks. Whether it's landscape photography, architecture photography, any kind of photography, basically, all those compositional tools that are present in those books, you can use yeah, in all kinds of photography. It's important that I focus on their called tools that you can implement in your photography, you can use in your photography rather than rules. Rules, we do not like rules because if we just all follow the rule of thirds, in that way we will just end up making the same composition, everybody. Obviously there is some aesthetic things that you want to adhere to that are a little bit more objective. I, you should be careful about saying objective beauty because is beauty in the eye of the beholder or can we come to some kind of kind of intersubjective conclusion about what beauty is. Anyway, there are links to my ebooks down in the description. Very easy to read, minimal text. So Back to the point of the video is that if you do have a clear sky, as I said, you can shoot in um, during sunrise or during sunset or blue hour and implement the sun and the moon in your photos. In this case, obviously, it is the sun I'm photographing towards with this bridge. Beautiful shot. And as I said, we want to avoid that the photo is boring. And the best way to avoid a boring photo is to add interesting things to it. In this case, the sun and the moon. And try to line up your foreground, in this case here, the bridge, with that background, which is the sun or the moon. And you can get some spectacular and interesting photos. So yeah, add as much interest to your photos as possible, or go for a little bit more minimal photo. On a clear sky day, the minimal photo is probably the better choice, simply just because that you don't have a whole lot to work with. So another tip is to use the long lens. Now, the long lens is obviously good if you want to capture the sun and the moon because they are relatively small in the scene. But the long lens is also really, really good to just like zoom in on whatever it is you want to photograph. In this case here, it was the bridge with the sun behind. And had I shot that with the long or with the wide angle lens, then I would have introduced much more of the sky. It would have been a more minimalist photo, but with the long lens, I can 
fill up the screen. I can put everything of interest well within the screen or within the frame of the photo. And to avoid making a boring clear sky photo, try to yeah, fill the frame with whatever is of interest that you want to photograph. It's, it's really uh, that simple. So uh, the long lens is always, always, always good to bring, especially on clear sky days. I got this photo half an hour after sunrise and I actually think it's also quite good. It's much more minimalist and due to it having been shot in the golden hour, it has these beautiful soft pastel colors. It is certainly much less dramatic than the sunrise version. So even though the sun is not in the frame, the interesting subject, colors and long lens does get the job done. Comparing the photos also shows my hesitation about celebrating the clouds in the sunrise photo. They may actually make the photo a bit too dramatic than what is necessary. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And speaking of minimalism, after the sunrise shoot I went for a little stroll in the town of Drauer, which is located nearby. It's a beautiful old town with a lot of yellow houses where the clear blue sky made for a fantastic complementary background. There is definitely something extra satisfying about walking around in a silent old town just after sunrise, finding interesting patterns and picking out details. It certainly helped me forget about the sorrows of the world right now. These days I'm running a spring sale where you can save entire hundred dollars on my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. The course is designed in a progressive way so that we start with the simple lectures first, introductions to the programs and how Photoshop works with layers and masking, and then advance to some of the harder techniques such as luminosity masking, focus stacking and all-round heavy processing with many layers. If you're already familiar with Lightroom, it should be easy to get started with this course. I also have a 33% discount on my other tutorials, so there is all around many dollars to save. The coupon code is in the description of this video, and if you're watching this video far into the future, be sure to check out the description anyway, as there is most likely another coupon code to use. However, right now it is spring sale time, so be sure to get your $100 off and good luck with the course. As always, thanks for watching, I'd highly appreciate both a like and a comment, and see you in the next video.